As the release of the sequel Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness approaches, we thought we'd take a look back at the first film to see what made it worthy of a Best Visual Effects Oscar nomination and what we can expect from the sequel. For Doctor Strange VFX superheroes, Industrial Light & Magic, Framestore, Rise VFX, Crafty Apes, Luma Pictures, Method Studios, Lola VFX and SPOV join forces to produce nearly 1,500 VFX shots. Do you want to know how you can make the awesome Doctor Strange portal effect and hundreds of other outstanding VFX for absolutely free? Well, with Skillshare, of course. I took a bunch of classes with M. Jake, and he walked me through how to make a very convincing portal in After Effects. He also gave out the pre-matted effect for students without access to After Effects. I honestly love how many classes like these there are on Skillshare, and the best part is that if you're one of the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description, you'll get a one-month free trial. You can learn all of these industry-level techniques for absolutely free. Seriously guys, have some fun creating your own VFX and give Skillshare a try today. You won't be disappointed. Framestore produced 365 VFX shots, which included the creation of the astral form, the complicated warping, bending and moving of sets, the creation of high-resolution digital doubles for key characters, and the animation of Doctor Strange's cape which was so extensive and expressive that they ended up treating it as its own character named KP, the Cape. When Doctor Strange is in his astral form, he can still be in the real world, but he is not visible to humans. Even though the look of this effect is fairly well established in the comics, bringing the effect into the real world was an entirely different matter. Framestore had to make it look magical and otherworldly, but if they made it look too mystical, it would look ghost-like, and if they made it look too magical, it would look unrealistic. They eventually achieved the look by not only making their photoreal digital doubles transparent, but by making them backlit. This actually created a lot of negative space that the human eye perceives as contrast. When the character is transparent, the eye interprets both what is behind and the lack of detail at the same time. KP is its own character and has its own personality, kind of like the hero's horse in Western films or Aladdin's flying carpet. The VFX team once again had to play a delicate balancing game. They had to animate the cloth to express its personality, but it couldn't look too much like a cartoon. It had to move how they wanted it to, yet still remain a piece of cloth. This meant that KP ended up being a complicated mix of animation and simulation. In a lot of shots where Doctor Strange is wearing the cape, he was actually shot wearing just a collar with shoulder sections, the fabric of which had to be digitally matched for the CG version. Industrial Light and Magic worked mainly on the New York and Hong Kong sequences, delivering around 350 VFX shots that were tremendously challenging. The Hong Kong sequence was a confusing one a gigantic puzzle that required exhaustive planning to execute correctly. The main actors in this sequence were moving forwards in time, whilst the extras were moving backwards in time, and the city itself was reconstructing itself. Each sequence was shot with motion control, so only five or six could be shot a night, and it took them 23 nights to shoot it all. The basic principle was to first shoot the hero actors whilst recording the movement of the camera from the starting point to the finish point. Next, they'd shoot the extras and the destruction of the set, but have the camera move from the finishing point back to the starting point. When both plates were composited with the camera moving from start to finish, the heroes would be moving forwards and the extras and destruction would be reversed. Extra complications were that in some sequences, the extras were moving at half time, so different frame rates had to be used. They also had to carefully plan the routes the extras were running to avoid them colliding with the hero actors when the two plates were combined. Contrary to the Hong Kong sequence that was filmed on Hong Kong sets, the New York mirror sequence was filmed entirely in front of green screens. One of the main problems they encountered was lighting. Tall buildings and poor air quality mean that when you are at street level in New York, you are rarely in direct sunlight. Although this may not seem much of a problem in everyday life, it is when you want a dramatically lit action sequence. 
The location shots at the start of the sequence were very dull and flat, but the set pieces they shot on the skid pan at Long Cross Studios had more light coming through. In the sequences where the city started moving and they used more digital doubles, they began to add more light with the excuse of it reflecting off the windows of the buildings. When they didn't have digi doubles, they used stand in geometry and full match move animation so that they could re light, to some degree, the actors on the live action plates. All this was done to create a more dramatically lit sequence that would have otherwise been set in bland shadows. Luma worked on around 200 shots, including both the opening sequence of the film and the final sequence. For the London sequence, in addition to creating 14 digital doubles, Luma's animation department hand-keyed and choreographed the architecture of the buildings with the actors' motions. For both the London and the cathedral sequence, they developed and built tools to duplicate and render the fractals of the buildings thousands of times over, as well as in-house tools that enabled them to direct the speed and movement of the fractals and visualize the scenes inside the viewpoint of Maya. Just like Framestore did with the astral form, Luma also had to translate the 2D comic book look of the Dormammu into the 3D real world. Dormammu is a solid yet constantly changing shape. He is liquid, solid and gas all at the same time, and yet at the same time, he is none of these. In order to create Dormammu, Luma basically had to combine every department's expertise into one being. Performance capture from Cumberbatch was combined with hand-keyed animation. This was combined with a complex rigging technique to liquefy Dormammu. Deformer sets were used to make his face ripple as if reality was distorting, and then lots of effects layering. All this was driven by Cumberbatch's performance changes and choreographed and triggered by Luma's artists. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget that the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So don't delay and give it a free trial today.